Hey guys, today I'm going to teach you about the beast, his image, the pre-advent, the millennial, and final judgment. Jeffrey Leon, welcome to this edition of Satan Strategic Command, dedicated to the advancement of Christian theology, explicating the mark of the beast. May God bless the reading of his holy word. Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will shew unto thee the judgment of the great harlot that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stone and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication and upon her forehead was a name written mystery babylon the great the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth and i saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of jesus and when i saw her i wondered with great admiration Daniel chapter 8 verse 14 unto 2,300 days then shall the sanctuary be cleansed here Holy Father God is unequivocally announcing the cleansing of the heavenly sanctuary we understand this to be the, the, the prophetic timeline for the beginning of the cleansing of the heavenly sanctuary and not the earthly sanctuary because we know that the earthly sanctuary was cleansed once a year from all the sins that had been transferred there by repentant Jews that that brought their sacrifice to the sanctuary and transferred their sin from from themselves and from their family members to the earthly sanctuary. So this the the the, the daily sacrifice was to transfer the sins from the sinner to the earthly sanctuary and then the cleansing of the the the, the earthly sanctuary once a year on the day of atonement was to transfer the sins from the earthly sanctuary to the final responsible agent of sin and that is Satan which was placed and this was done by placing the the sins on the head of the scapegoat so we know that this reference here in Daniel chapter 8 verse 14 is not a reference to the cleansing of the earthly sanctuary as the Jews understood it it's a it's a reference to the cleansing of the heavenly sanctuary and this is actually we also know that this is the, the this marks the it marks the time when Jesus transferred from the holy place to the most holy place in the heavenly sanctuary and the beginning of the pre-advent judgment that was to begin at the end of the 2300 years Ezekiel chapter 4 verse 6 I've appointed unto thee each day for a year and so we know that in prophet and prophecy that when God mentions prophetic timelines and in in uh, in days that this can be translated into years so we know that this actually this prophecy start this prophecy started at a at a time we know the timeline when it started and therefore we have the timeline of when it ended the 2300 years and when Jesus Christ transferred from the holy place to the most holy place in the heavenly sanctuary and this was done to perform the work of final judgment to set the seal of eternal life upon the saints of God just before the second advent of Jesus Christ which in in and of itself without even judging people uh, uh, um, um, and placing the mark of the beast upon them in and of judgment for the saints in and of itself is enough to set the wicked apart for exclusion with the mark of the beast so Revelation chapter 20 verse 1 through 6 and I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the, of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid old on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more until the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. Verse 4, And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection resurrection on such the second death hath no power but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him 1,000 years 
So the thousand year judgment begins at the resurrection of the, the, the saints to the rapture of, of the living and the resurrection of the saints. And the, they're described as the blessed and holy. And this also, uh, this begin, excuse me, this begins the thousand year judgment in the holy city that the judge, that the saints get to, to finalize and 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 judging uh, uh, and, and, and people that they may have loved that that are not going to be allowed to to inherit eternal life through the gospel of Jesus Christ and if we know it's it's there to allow us to see the workings of evil angels and Satan himself in their rebellion against God so the purpose of the thousand year judgment is for the saints. It's for the saints. Judgment is given unto them and it's allowed for us to, to witness as to why people that we may have known and may have loved are not going to be allowed to receive eternal life and, uh, and the, the inner machinations of satanic captivity as the evil agencies that reside in hell and death captured the peoples of this world. So the saints become are, are cognizant of why um, all unsaved people and all satanic agencies are going into the lake of fire. So the thousand year judgment of the blessed and holy also gives us the disposition of Satan and all of the unsaved peoples of the world. We know that Satan is resigned to the desolate wastes of the planet Earth while the saints are residing in the holy city performing this final work of judgment. Job chapter 15, verse 28, For he dwelleth in desolate cities and houses which no man inhabiteth, which are ready to become heaps. And we discussed, in the previous lesson, we discussed how God's depiction of the ruin of the habitation of man is God's... Uh, uh, view of the the ruin of satanic dominion as it claimed rule within the tabernacle of man this is one way god describes the the desolation of man's habitation is is the desolation of man's uh, soul, the mark of the beast being imparted upon unsaved peoples as the seal of God is manifested in our world just before the second advent of Jesus Christ and it's how God is 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 explicating the rule of satanic power as evil people adhered to satanic power and they were captured by Satan and they were finally they were resigned with the mark of the beast and to unto eternal damnation so when God says here that in Job 15 chapter 15 verse 28 for he dwelleth in desolate cities and houses which no man inhabiteth which are ready to become heaps he's actually here talking about Satan Satan being able to rule excuse me Satan being able to witness the manifestation of his his rule and his dominion as it brought man to destruction within himself and man destroyed his environment and the results of that is clear for him to see for the thousand years as he gets to walk the earth desolate with nobody left to tempt. The Bible says that there's nobody left for him to tempt during this thousand years because we know that they're all in their graves. Revelation chapter 20 says, but the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. We know that every eye sees him, even though the, those that pierced him. We, every eye sees the second advent of Jesus Christ. But all of the wicked go back into their graves for the thousand years. And Satan's given a thousand years to, to, to witness, to walk the earth amongst the desolate habitations and to see the result of his of his rule and his dominion within man as he claimed captivity of the creature man willingly we know the image of the beast willingly bows down to the lordship of satan it it it, it fails the test that jesus christ went through in luke chapter 4 verses 1 through 13 and it bows down to the lordship of Satan willingly for sexual and monetary control over the world. As it's depicted in Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6, it loses this battle and thus it loses its soul. So we know that Satan is resigned to the desolate wastes of planet Earth while the saints are residing in the holy city performing the final work of judgment for the thousand years. And all of the wicked unsaved dead are in their graves awaiting the second resurrection and final judgment 
at the third advent of Jesus Christ as the saints descend from the holy city. This occurs in Revelation chapter 21, verse 2, and I, saw, and I John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. In other words, the saints of God are in the city. They've been evaluated. They, are, they have been evaluated. We know the, the valuation. The evaluation of the saints appears here in the holy city in Revelation chapter 21. Where John says, and he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, shewed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God, and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone clear as crystal. And then it, he goes on to describe the, the, uh, The building of the wall of it was jasper, and the city was pure gold, like unto clear glass. And the foundations of the wall were city of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. And so we know this is the evaluation that God has evaluated the saints by their works. We know the Bible says that when at the second advent, Jesus Christ rewards everybody according to their works. Revelation chapter twenty-two, verse twelve: And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. So this is the evaluation. Evaluation. This is God evaluating the saints and rewarding them. And with they all, everyone receives eternal life, but they get special. That's obvious that that we get special levels of rewards according to our works. And on the flip side of that, in Revelation chapter seventeen, verse one through six, we have as all flesh receive the mark of the beast, their evaluation by God as they are seated in their final seat in the kingdom of hell in a graduating scale according to their works up unto the manifest appearing of antichrist so we have we have the holy city and we have the 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 woman arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, which is the bride prepared to meet her husband, Revelation chapter 19, verse 7 and 8, that depicts the evaluation of the saints. And then we have God's evaluation of the saints. And then we have Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6, which depicts the evaluation of satanic captivity as it resides in those that receive the mark of the beast and they take their final seats in the kingdom of hell. But during the thousand years, all the wicked, that all the people that lived on earth that received the mark of the beast, we know are residing within their graves. I wrote here Isaiah chapter 14, verse 18 through 21. It says, verse 20, Thou shalt not be joined with them in burial, because thou hast destroyed thy land and slain thy people. The seed of evildoers shall never be renowned. This is the, the declaration of judgment by Holy Father God, not allowing Satan to go into the grave for the thousand years, but uh, forcing him to to walk the desolate places of the earth and to witness the, the result of his claim to rule and dominion within all those that receive the mark of the beast. So, the first resurrection raises the righteous to occupy the holy city. John chapter 14, verse 1 through 4. And I, in my house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, and I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. So... The first resurrection raises the righteous to occupy the holy city to witness the judgments of Holy Father God and Jesus and of that of the entire creation of unfallen beings that has already been placed upon the heads of everyone who received the mark of the beast. Revelation chapter 13, verse 15 through 17, we have the seal of Satan and its operational capacity as the image to the beast labors to incorporate the constitution of Satan into the United States Constitution as the seal of Satan resides within the ambassador bearing the, his seal and the high priest of Satan, which we now know is the corporeal body of the church of Satan, which is the image to the beast. The parable of the tares, Matthew chapter 13, and the wheat, Matthew chapter 13, verse 24 to 30, and 36 through 43, and the parable of the harvest or the net in Matthew chapter 13, verse 47 to 50, are absolutely crystal clear that the wicked are, the wicked are severed from among the just prior to the second advent of Jesus Christ, and the seal of God is placed upon all the righteous, and the mark of the peace is placed upon all the wicked. This, the seal of God justifies all of the righteous, 
and then it's declared the righteous shall shine forth as a sun in the kingdom of their father. This is also manifested in Matthew, excuse me, Malachi chapter three, verse 7, sixteen through eighteen. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. This is the seal of God. What God is declaring here in Malachi chapter 3, verse 16 through 18, is the seal of God and the final evaluation of all the saints as they receive eternal life while the wicked people of the earth are in by just by proximity to the, the saints of God are are receiving the mark of the beast. You know, the, the judgment really doesn't even have to be rendered upon the wicked. Just announcing, just placing the seal of God on the saints will in and of itself is enough to uh, uh, to place the mark of the beast upon all the unsaved peoples of the earth. But we know God is is righteous, just, and fair, and that He allows judgment to 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 be thorough and everyone to be completely satisfied to his his justice his righteousness and his fairness in dealing with all of creation and with the wicked people that chose not to to receive righteousness love and faith and to choose to glorify God and to walk in the shadow of his countenance as they lived here upon the earth so but Malachi chapter 3 verse 16 through 18 that's what God is describing here when he's saying they shall be mine when I make up my jewels he's describing the evaluation of the saints that have received the received the seal of God and so this is a very important passage it's an amazing passage of scripture and it's a parallel to what what John describes in the holy city in Revelation chapter 21 where the walls are of all of all manner of precious stones so the first resurrection is the second advent of Jesus, occurs at the second advent of Jesus, and it is the end of Satan's presence, purpose, and power among all the saints. We know that the saints will no longer be infected with satanic power at the second advent of Jesus. Well, well, it's before, before this. At the, once the seal of God is placed upon all the saints, then the wicked receive the mark of the beast. And we know that the seven last plagues fall on all those that receive the mark of the beast. So the seal of God occurs sometime, days, numerous days, before the, 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 uh, the second advent of Jesus Christ. We know this absolutely crystal clear. It's crystal clear that, that the seal of God and the mark of the beast and the parable of the wheat and the tares falls upon those that are saved and those that are not saved and that, that receive the mark of the beast. We know that, that, and we know that this is the end. This is the end of satanic power as it infects and corrupts the minds of those that retain the love of God through the seal of God and receive eternal life. So, People that do not understand the pre-advent judgment and that this places either the seal of God or the mark of the beast upon the heads and in the hearts of, of, of the saints and on f all flesh just prior to the second advent of Jesus Christ, Matthew chapter 13, verse 49, they, it's, it's a lot of passages in this Bible are going to be distorted and they're going to have a, a corrupted vision of what God is communicating because there's numerous passages here that depict the seal of God and the mark of the beast in, in the Old and the New Testaments. And if you don't understand the fulfillment of Christ's ministry in the heavenly sanctuary that grants eternal life to the saints while while it sets the wicked apart for exclusion with the mark of the beast occurring before the second advent of Jesus Christ there's a lot of there's hundreds of passages in this bible that are you're going to have a distorted and a corrupted you're going to wrestle with because you don't understand the truth and of what God is trying to communicate here in his word and so we're absolutely we know beyond any doubt that Christ transferred from the holy place to the most holy place to to begin the work of the pre-advent judgment at the end of the 2300 year prophecy and I wrote here Matthew chapter 13 verse 49 so shall it be at the end of the world, the angel shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just. We know that the wicked, if they had their place, they would, con they would choose to continue in their lives. They would choose to continue to live their lives 
in satanic power here on the earth and build cities and occupy the earth. And that's why they're severed. They have to be severed from the glory and the presence of God so they can be resigned to the lake of fire. And they're not allowed to infect the universe with satanic power and the presence of evil. And that's what the lake of fire is for. It's there for the devil and his angels. And we know that God wants all men to come under the knowledge of the truth and be saved. He doesn't want anybody to go into the lake of fire with Satan. When that's the, the fire is only made for Satan, but there are people that are going to choose to turn away from the glory and the love of God and to serve God, to serve God in love and glory, and to, 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 to receive the free gift of righteousness and salvation that grants eternal life unto the saints. There are people that are just, they just don't want it. They don't want anything to do with it. And they, they, some people, I, I believe even think when this life is done, I'll be happy for it to be over. And that's what's going to happen. You know, I personally don't believe that people are going to burn like Satan will for a time. I believe for the majority of people that are unsaved that it will, that it'll be over before they even realize that they're in pain. So, um, Jesus said, John 8, 12, I'm the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. There's only one church in this world that, that appeared and began its ministry and mission as revealed in Revelation chapter 14, verse 6 through 12, at the end of of the 2,300 year prophecy. And that's the church that's preaching and teaching the message of the three angels in Revelation chapter 14, verses 6 through 12. There's only one church that is heralding all three facets of this three angels message today and the, and the hour of the judgment. And this Revelation 14, we have here in this Christian herald that is the manifestation of the last day church. It's the living animated petition of the last church, last day's church that is empowered by these three angels. It says here in verse seven, and I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them to dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue of people, saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come. And this is the very first few lines of Revelation chapter 14, verse 6 through 12. And this, this, these very first lines here proclaim that the, the, the last day remnant church that is to proclaim the glory of God and the seal of God upon the world is the church that manifests the pre-advent judgment to the world. It says right here, fear God. And give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come. If a church in this world is not proclaiming the judgment and the imminent manifestation of the seal of God to be manifested in our world, that church has an incomplete and distorted view of Christianity. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. That great city because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the third angel followed them saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark upon in his forehead or in his hand, the shame shall drink of the wine of wrath of God. Okay? So the last day church will be preaching the imminent manifestation of the seal of God and the mark of the beast and the, the reality of the ministry of Jesus Christ in the most holy place right now today, perfecting the seal of God and eternal life for the saints and finishing the mystery of the gospel in our world. If, if a church is not, if a church today, and we know we're living in the last days, if a church today is not proclaiming the manifestation of Jesus Christ, ministry and administration in the holy, in the most holy place, and the imminent manifestation of the seal of God and the mark of the beast in our world, that church is not in fulfillment with the with God's judgment of what is what is the manifestation of the last day's church in our world today revelation that's what revelation chapter 14 verse 6 through 12 it is the living animated petition and the living animated uh message that resides in the heart in the hearts and that is proclaimed to the world that is 
the remnant church of God and the, the, the church that is proclaiming the last days of, of, of our world to, to the world. So this is the Bible is absolutely crystal clear. Revelation chapter 14, verse 6 through 12. If a church is not proclaiming the messages that are given by the three angels here in this passage of Scripture, it's not fulfilling holistically its ministry in the glory and the manifest presence of Jesus Christ. So, Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6, we have, we know why the image of the beast sold its soul to, to Satan. It sold its soul to Satan for sexual and monetary control. We know the image of the beast appears as the names of blasphemy in, its, in their plurality that appear within the beast in Revelation chapter 17, verse 3. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy. So we know that this is the image of the beast and the motive that is depicted in this word picture that the image of the beast sold its soul to Satan was a desire for sexual and monetary control on pain of death as when as when you examine the seal of Satan in Revelation chapter 13, verse 15 through 17, that makes this absolutely crystal clear. That we know that the image of the beast sold its soul to Satan for sexual and monetary control over the entire United States population on pain of death. That's what Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6, this word picture is depicting, and the seal of Satan, the constitution of Satan, is enumerating in Revelation chapter 13, verse 15 through 17. And so we know the image of the beast is laboring to conceal sexual abuse of God's children and a fraudulent cloak of righteousness today. It's because it's trying, it's laboring. We know it's laboring to incorporate, to incorporate Revelation chapter 13, verse 15 through 17 into the United States Constitution. And thereby we know the image of the beast is pouring out the spirit of Antichrist and that it's soliciting the worship of death amongst our population as it is tempting people with the love of money and thereby we know that it's soliciting a religious tax that appears in Revelation chapter 13 verse 16 and 17 because we know it's pouring out the spirit of Antichrist as everybody is absolutely painfully aware of in our world today. So we know the image of the beast has sold its soul to Satan at, at, at it's in illicit relationship with death and it's attempting to solicit the harlot the harlot false apostate Christianity into, a, into a, a unified one mind, one voice, and one singular vision with the spirit of Antichrist into one body that is false apostate Christianity and has the mark of the beast. It's soliciting, it's raising up the church of Satan right now as the, the ambassador and the, the high priest of Satan. And we know the, own, the image of the beast is filling its own cup to overflow with satanic power, power as manifested by 1 John 2, 15 through 18, which we discussed yesterday, is the complete cup of the spirit of Antichrist as it resides within the heart of man. Love not the world, neither things that are in the world, the lust of flesh, the lust of eyes, and the pride of life. Little children is the last time, as you have heard, the Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. 1 Timothy 6.10 The love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. So we know the image of the beast is laboring to fulfill, to fill its, its own cup, to overflow with the spirit of Antichrist and array itself by its words with the demons of hell. Revelation chapter 18, verse 1 and 2. We know the words, uh, the ministry, Romans, excuse me, John 63, Jesus said, it is the spirit that quaketh the flesh, profiteth nothing. The words I speak unto you, they are, they are spirit and they are life. Proverbs 18, 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So we know the image of the beast is laboring today in its ministry, soliciting people into satanic captivity, its ministry is actually regenerating its blood with the spirit of Antichrist and summoning the demons of hell into its presence as it's laboring to incorporate satanic captivity into the United States Constitution. We know this is a labors for horizontal immunity. That is the manifestation of the mark of the beast and vertical ta detachment from the love of God and the glory of God as it throws, flows through the throne of God. Revelation chapter 20, 11. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them. This is the manifestation of vertical detachment and the mark of the beast and horizontal captivity falling upon all of the unsaved peoples of our world. 
We know the image of the beast is laboring for, for immunity for iniquity, transgression, and sin, and extortion within its jurisdiction. And this is the fulfillment of its only purpose for existence, and that's to kill the creature with satanic power as it labors to satiate its own lusts, captivating, the, captivating the, itself and the creature within the kingdom of Satan. John chapter 8, four, verses 44. You are your father of the devil, unless your father you will do. You are a murderer to fulfill all your lusts. Romans chapter 7, verse 5. For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sins, which were by the law, did bring forth fruit in our member. Did, excuse me. For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sins, which were by the law, by the presence of God, by the holiness of God, for God is holy, be ye holy, for I am holy. By the presence of God, for when we were in the flesh, the motions of sins, which were by the law, did work at our members to bring forth fruit unto death. And that's what the ministry of the image of the beast is. It's the message that it takes to the world, soliciting satanic captivity, pouring the spirit of Antichrist into the creature, summoning the, summoning the demons of hell into its presence to impose the mark of the beast upon all flesh and to, to manifest the kingdom of Antichrist as it is depicted in Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6, so it can live for a few seconds in temporal glory, satiating its own illicit sexual and monetary desires. And that's what is being expl explicated by the prophet in Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6. The final captivity of all lost souls in the kingdom of hell, their evaluation in a graduating scale, of their evaluation by God in a, in a graduating scale, up unto the manifest appearing of their king. And we know that Antichrist cannot crown himself in the kingdoms of man until he has first seated him. Excuse me. He cannot, he cannot seat himself in the kingdoms of man until he has first crowned himself king. Excuse me. Satan cannot crown himself in the kingdoms of man until he has first seated himself as king Antichrist is seated in the hearts of all flesh. And that's what Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6 is. It's all flesh. It's living dead souls residing in suspended animation, de demanding the appearance of their king, the king of hell and death. Jeffrey Leon, if you're edified by this program, please hit the like button and subscribe to this channel to receive notifications of future installments. And remember, you can come to the throne room of God today and receive your healing directly if you're abiding in mercy and grace as manifested by Matthew chapter 13, verse 10 through 15. Thank you.